Chapter 22 focuses on how firms use budgets to create a plan for the future. In part one, we will be talking about budget basics. A firm's budgets are essentially their quantitative plans for the future. These plans could be expressed in physical terms like gallons of raw material or hours of labor that are needed, or the budgets could be expressed in financial terms, dollars for materials or dollars for labor. This is important for the firm to make sure that it has enough of all of the things that it will need, but it's also important for the firm to be able to control its operations. That is, the budget creates standards so that firm employees know what top managers expect of them. Then, at the end of the period, managers can compare what the budget expected to various departments' actual performance so that employees can receive feedback on whether their performance met expectations. And managers can take corrective action if actual performance was different than what was expected, either by planning differently or retraining employees or by changing their expectations if it turns out that those expectations were unreasonable. Every budget starts with planning. A firm often has several sets of plans. They have very long-term strategic plans for creating a certain market position or changing the kinds of projects that the firm offers to its customers. And then they also have short-term goals within the next year and long-term goals for a few years out from that. Based on these plans, the firm creates its budgets. Then the firm lives through the next period. It does what it's supposed to do, creates products, sells those products to its customers. By comparing what actually happened to what the budgets predicted, the firm can control operations. Their expectations set the standard, and then the firm can see whether people achieved those expectations. In addition, comparing actual operations to the firm's short-term and long-term goals helps the firm to know whether they are moving closer to achieving those goals so that they can plan even better for the next period. Budgeting helps the firm in several ways. Number one, it forces managers to plan. That way it increases the chances that the firm will be ready for the events that it expects to have in the coming period. In addition, it gives managers information so that they can improve their decision-making in the current period 
and in future periods when things happen that the managers have to decide about. It also sets benchmarks so that managers can determine whether their subordinates are achieving expectations. And it forces different departments and different divisions within the firm to communicate with each other and coordinate their actions so that the firm as a whole makes better decisions. Here's a question. A firm expects which of these benefits when it starts the budgeting process. Think about it. If you chose answer D, you're right. All of these things are benefits of budget. There are several philosophies that firms might use to create their budgets. Some firms use what's called top-down budgeting. That means that people in top management decide how many resources each department or division gets. This is a very efficient way of budgeting, but often top managers are not familiar with what kinds of sales, kinds of products, kinds of costs, the different divisions face. And therefore, top-down budgeting doesn't always allocate resources where they're needed the most. By contrast, bottom-up or participative budgeting involves asking each department what it will need in the coming period in order to accomplish its tasks. That information is fed up through the chain of command so that the final budget is the sum total of what each department needs. Most firms use incremental budgeting. That means that the start of the budgeting process is last period's budget which is then adjusted up or down to reflect expectations of things that might be different in the current period. The problem with this method is that most people don't want to get in trouble with their superiors. That's human nature. Therefore, for example, a salesperson might underestimate the number of units that they think they can sell in the coming period, or somebody in production might overestimate the amount of materials or labor that they need in the coming period, or somebody in the supply chain may overestimate how much it's going to cost to acquire various materials. These things result in less than the best budget. By contrast, zero-based budgeting starts out with a blank sheet of paper, and everything that goes into the budget must be justified. This gets rid of a lot of the slack that may accumulate if a firm used incremental budgeting, but it takes a lot longer and most people don't like it because they feel that they are being questioned. Some firms use incremental budgeting for several years and then 
recognize that slack has probably accumulated in the budget, so they'll have a year of zero-based budgeting and then go back to the incremental method for several more. It's human nature to try to game the system, not because people are thieves or cheaters, but because what individuals want and what the firm wants happens to be different. The firm wants a realistic and efficient budget. Individuals don't want to get in trouble and do want to get their bonus at the end of the period. So managers have to work on creating a good relationship with their subordinates and try to encourage the subordinates to give realistic budget numbers. The master budget is the firm's comprehensive financial plan for the coming period. And it has a lot of budgets in it, which can be divided into two categories. Operating budgets focus on inputs, what the firm needs in order to accomplish its goals. The financial budgets focus on outcomes, that is, how the firm will look at the end of the period based on its expectations. This is a diagram of a firm's master budget. It looks complicated because it's composed of a number of smaller budgets. These are the operating budgets, that is, all of the inputs that the firm needs. The start of the budgeting process is always the sales budget because that's going to determine everything that the firm does during the period. Based on the sales budget, the firm needs to determine its production budget how many units it needs to produce in the coming period so that it will have enough units to sell and any extra units that it feels that it wants in case sales are different than predicted. Based on the production budget, the firm will determine its materials budget, labor budget, and overhead budget so that it will be able to produce all of the units that it needs so that it will be able to sell all of the units that it expects to be demanded. In addition, the sales budget controls the selling and administrative budget. How much will the firm have to plan to cover its selling and administrative costs to support the number of units that the firm believes it will be able to sell. The capital budget relates to either acquiring or getting rid of long-term assets like machinery, delivery trucks, and factories. If the firm expects to be operating within the relevant range in the coming period, then maybe there isn't much need for changes in the capital budget. But if the sales budget predicts that the firm will need more trucks, equipment, factories, or less of those things, then the capital budget 
needs to plan for changes in the operating capacity of the firm. These are financial budgets. The cash budget is based on how much cash the firm expects to get from customers and how much cash it will need to cover all of its production, selling, administrative, and capital budget expenditures. Based on that, the firm can make budgeted financial statements. That is, it can predict what its balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows will look like if everything goes the way that the firm expects. Then the firm can compare its strategic plan to its capital assets to determine whether it has enough of the factors of production that it needs in order to accomplish these goals and move forward in accomplishing its strategic Here's a question. Which of these is the starting point of the master budget? That's right. Everything that the firm plans in the coming period is based on the number of units that the firm expects to be able to sell. Here's another question. The budgeted statement of cash flows is part of which element in the master budget? Yes, the budgeted statement of cash flows is an outcome budget. It's part of the financial budgets in the master budget. Let's take a look at a firm. Miles Manufacturing has talked to the sales department and based on their input has predicted how many units it expects to sell in the first couple of months of next year. The firm predicts that it will be able to sell these units at $8 each. Let's make a sales budget for Miles Manufacturing. In January, the firm expects to sell 10,000 units. At $8 each, that means that they would predict $80,000 of sales revenue. In February, the firm predicts that it will sell 12,000 units. At $8 each, that would be $96,000 of sales revenue. In March, the firm expects to be even busier and sell 15,000 units. At $8 each, that would be $120,000 of sales revenue. In part two of this chapter, we'll see what the firm needs in order to accomplish these sales goals.